the garden of live flowers i should see the garden far better said alice to herself if i could get to the top of the hill and here's a path that leads straight to it at least no it doesn't do that after going a few yards along the path and turning several sharp corners but i suppose it will at last but how curious it twists it's more like a corkscrew than a path well this turn goes to the hill i suppose no it doesn't this goes straight back to the house well then i'll try it the other way and so she did wandering up and down and trying turn after turn but always coming back to the house do what she would indeed once when she turned a corner rather more quickly than usual she ran against it before she could stop herself it's no use talking about it alice said looking up at the house and pretending it was arguing with her i'm not going in again yet i know i should have to get through the looking-glass again back into the old room and there'd be an end of all my adventures so resolutely turning her back upon the house she set out once more down the path determined to keep straight on till she got to the hill for a few minutes all went on well and she was saying i really shall do it this time when the path gave a sudden twist and shook itself as she described it afterwards and the next moment she found herself actually walking in at the door oh it's too bad she cried i never saw such a house for getting in the way never however there was the hill full in sight so there was nothing to be done but start again this time she came upon a large flower bed with a border of daisies and a willow tree growing in the middle oh tiger lily said alice addressing herself to one that was waving gracefully about in the wind i wish you could talk we can talk said the tiger lily when there's anybody worth talking to alice was so astonished that she could not speak for a minute it quite seemed to take her breath away at length as the tiger lily only went on waving about she spoke again in a timid voice almost in a whisper and can all the flowers talk as well as you can said the tiger lily and a great deal louder it isn't manners for us to begin you know said the rose and i really was wondering when you'd speak said i to myself her face has got some sense in it though it's not a clever one still you're the right colour and that goes a long way i don't care about the colour the tiger lily remarked if only her petals curled up a little more she'd be all right alice didn't like being criticised so she began asking questions aren't you sometimes frightened at being planted out here with nobody to take care of you there's the tree in the middle said the rose what else is it good for but what could it do if any danger came alice asked it says bow wow cried a daisy that's why its branches are called boughs didn't you know that cried another daisy and here they all began shouting together till the air seemed quite full of little shrill voices silence every one of you cried the tiger lily waving itself passionately from side to side and trembling with excitement they know i can't get at them it panted bending its quavering head towards alice or they wouldn't dare to do it never mind alice said in a soothing tone and stooped down to the daisies who were just beginning again she whispered if you don't hold your tongues i'll pick you there was silence in a moment and several of the pink daisies turned white that's right said the tiger lily the daisies are worst of all when one speaks they all begin together and it's enough to make one wither to hear the way they go on how is it you can all talk so nicely alice said hoping to get into a better temper by a compliment 
I've been in many gardens before, but none of the flowers could talk. Put your hand down and feel the ground, said the tiger lily. Then you'll know why. Alice did so. It's very hard, she said, but I don't see what that has to do with it. In most gardens, the tiger lily said, they make the beds too soft, so the flowers are always asleep. This sounded a very good reason, and Alice was quite pleased to know it. I never thought of that before, she said. It's my opinion that you never think at all, the rose said in a rather severe tone. I never saw anybody that looked stupider, a violet said so suddenly that Alice quite jumped, for it hadn't spoken before. Hold your tongue, cried the tiger lily, as if you ever saw anybody. You keep your head under the leaves and snore away there till you know no more what's going on in the world than if you were a bud. Are there any more people in the garden besides me? Alice said, not choosing to notice the rose's last remark. There's one other flower in the garden that can move about like you, said the rose. I wonder how you do it. You're always wondering, said the tiger lily. But she's more bushy than you are. Is she like me? Alice asked eagerly, for the thought crossed her mind. There's another little girl in the garden somewhere. Well, she has the same awkward shape as you, the rose said, but she's redder, and her petals are shorter, I think. Her petals are done up close, almost like a dahlia, the tiger lily remarked, not tumbling about anyhow like yours. But that's not your fault, the rose added kindly. You're beginning to fade, you know, and then one can't help one's petals getting a little untidy. Alice didn't like this idea at all, so to change the subject she asked, Does she ever come out here? I dare say you'll see her soon, said the rose. She's one of the thorny kind. Where does she wear the thorns? Alice asked with some curiosity. Why, all around her head, of course, the rose replied. I was wondering you hadn't got some too. I thought it was the regular rule. She's coming, cried the larkspur. I hear her footsteps thump, thump, thump along the gravel walk. Alice looked round eagerly and found that it was the Red Queen. Oh,